Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at Atom Stream Suite. Now this is a new plugin, or I'm going to say top level layer of OBS that became available yesterday. It is still currently in beta, so there are some bugs and some bit nitpicks to kind of still iron out here and there. If you do have any issues with Stream Suite, please go and join the Atom Discord. I'll leave the link down below and post in the support section exactly where you need to be. Now, I am part of the Atom team, however, I thought it'd be good to kind of give a overview of exactly what to expect from Stream Suite and to see what is available to you before even downloading it. However, if you do want to test this out without affecting your main OBS, you can actually download a link to a portable version to try it all out with affecting your main setup. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So here it is, Atom Stream Suite in all of its glory. Remember, you do actually have to have OBS 32 installed as this is kind of like a layer on top of that as well. However, we just want to make things a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to navigate and to be able to show you around. So the first thing you're going to notice here at the very, very top is this new toolbar that you're going to get. On the right hand side, we have our usual controls such as going live, recording, our replay for OBS, aka global backtrack, our virtual cam, our studio mode and our settings as well. So if you want to edit anything within uh, OBS itself, you can do that up here. On the left hand side, you're going to notice these two tabs. We've got live and built. The idea between these is while you're live, you want to be in the live tab. So there's no distractions such as scene transitions, sources, X, Y, Z. You can easily have it much more minimalized while you're live and you can save space on your screen. Our build tab is exactly what you'd be using if you're building out your scenes. For example, adding sources, having multiple canvases and everything too. However, everything can be nice and minimalized here on the live tab. On the right hand side here, we've got our chat, activity feed and stream info. All you need to do in order to connect this out is basically connect to each service. So we're going to connect to Twitch and then we're also going to connect to YouTube. Also, you have to come through the OAuth kind of settings and everything too. And then once you've done two, if you wanted to add a kick as well, you click on the little user icon on the top right and you want to click on connect to kick. I have noticed, however, though, Kick currently has an issue with the OAuth login system. They are aware of this. We have booked a ticket with them. So if you have any problems with this, what I recommend doing is clicking on Docs on the top here, going to Custom Browser Docs. We'll call this one Kick, and then we'll uh, put in the URL for this. And then when this pops up here, what you want to do is log into this box on this service. And then after you've done that, you want to close the doc. We can delete it. This now creates a new session with an OBS of you being logged in and we connect to kick and then you'll have the actual OAuth screen here to grant us access to your chat, to your activity feed and to your stream info. Just want to point out as well that basically your activity feed and your chat won't really be active until live. We can only look at subscriptions and follows from Twitch and YouTube while offline. However, once you are live and channel point redemptions or subscriptions or anything else comes through super chat, super stickers from YouTube, that will all show up here in the activity feed. Down in the bottom right, we also have our stream info. So for example, if you want to set your title across all three services, you can adding your tags and even adding in your category. So we search for each service of exactly what it is and we can do that and save that out. If you want to have a different category or stream title per service, you click on the platforms here and then you can actually do each one individually. However, I'm much more catered to just having it all in one. If you want to customize the look of the chat as well, click on the settings here. You can change the menu position bar, either being top or bottom. You can also show your viewer count, hide it, show the badges of the service people are talking in. And if you want to view your moderators only, you can do that too. That comes across all three different services. If you're getting confused between Kick, YouTube and Twitch because of people with different username colors over on Twitch, we can actually disable that and they will come out just plain purple. Also remember too, if you want to customize the lookout of your live tab, you can do by dragging or closing docs and adding in your own docs, maybe of different canvases here and there. Basically, whenever you close uh, OBS, it should save out, meaning that you can completely customize how this looks around for you to be when you're live. Now I will get into the output and the live scenes in just a minute, but let's go across the build tab. So here we're on the build tab. Obviously we here we see we've got our default vertical canvas. We've got a couple of scenes I just decided to throw out in. You've got your sources and your scene transitions. The new two docs that we have or three docs we have in this scene is basically we've got our filters here. So if you've applied a filter to a source, this will appear in this doc here. And in our properties as well, in case you want to change some stuff quickly on a source, you can easily do that within our properties. So say for example here, if I go to video capture device, I'll just stick in the webcam. 
of a different video capture apparently and we can see here all of our options for this source as well if we add a filter onto this so for example if i go to filters uh, we'll just add a quick uh, color correction as an example. We'll have that there. We now have this here on that. When this is not selected though, you will have your properties of your source, but when you want to change your filters, you want to click on color correction, this will load it into here as well. As you can see too, we've got our default scene here on our vertical canvas. If we want to link this stuff to anything within our main canvas, we can right click and then literally just go link scenes and then choose whichever one it is. So whenever you switch your main canvas, whatever is on your other canvases, not your main one, and you link the scenes, this will then choose, it'll swap between each of them for that. To add another canvas, we can just click on add canvas at the top here. For example, I've already got another one here called Atom Stream Suite Canvas. This is an extra canvas and I'm going to have this as an actual another 16 by 9. Now, what we can actually do later on is we can actually mark out a different canvas for a different output. But the reason you may want that is different alerts, different chat for YouTube Kick and Twitch. YouTube Kick and Twitch? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. We'll go with that one. In order not to get confused, you can even add a color to it. So for example, here we're going to go OK and we're going to call this Kick Canvas. So we're going to have this here and boom, there we go. That's the new canvas added in. As you can see, it's got a nice bright green border. So we know it's associated with Kick. However, if instead of having to rebuild all of your actual scenes out and your sources, what you can actually do is you can create another canvas, which would be a cloned canvas. And instead, inside there, if you have got your source for your kick chat and your YouTube chat, you can swap them out, for example, your main Twitch chat within all of this as well. And it'll just create an exact clone of your main canvas, but with your sources switched out within each scene, allowing you not to have to rebuild everything from scratch. It's just a little bits here and there you can swap out for that. Over here in the bottom, we have our scene notes as well, in case you want to remember why you use this scene or if there's anything that you have to configure specifically within it, you can do that within each scene. For example, I can sit here and say test, then we go to nested webcam, that's not there, come back to here, it's in there as well. So this is kind of handy, especially you can have this on your actual live screen as well, just in case when you switch between scenes, you kind of remember exactly certain functionality or what the reason is of those scenes are so let's head across and back to the live layout here for this tab so obviously we've got our vertical here so when we add in anything into this vertical and our main canvas this will be displayed in here now we've got this little live scene dock now down here now the reason of this is if you want to quickly switch between different scenes for on your main canvas you can do so by clicking on plus so for example we've got our starting screen just chatting nested webcam and um our streaming screen as well so i can add these guys in to change in between them however i don't need the nested webcam so i can sit there and just say starting soon so i can actually switch between these different scenes and that'll easily switch between them on that you know what let's add some um, i'm just going to quickly add in some background images so you can see this working okay here we are we're back now obviously i've got my wallpaper here on obs looking crisp as always and as you can see and i've actually linked in my vertical scenes as well i've just reused the same wallpaper on each item here so we can go between our just chatting and our streaming screen as well so as you can see because the scenes are now linked we're able to do that and you're able to do this across canvas multiple canvases so say for example if you've got a youtube or a kick canvas both of them either or you can link your starting soon screen to your main canvas starting soon screen on both canvases so they all relay into that no problem whatsoever Right now we go into the output section. Now this is where it gets kind of cool. So what you can do is inside settings, we can sit here and we can see our outputs. So for example, I've got YouTube and Kick already set up here. However, all you need to do is just add stream output and select whichever service it is that you're running, put in your Kick stream key or your YouTube stream key and use it that way. Keep in mind on YouTube, you only need to put your stream key in once unless you're changing it every stream, which you don't need to do. I highly recommend setting up just a default stream key, putting that in once and you don't have to worry about at editing that each time. So inside here on kick, for example, we got our canvas. Now the very cool thing about this is now we've actually got our kick canvas. So we can actually select that and that'll be our output. Down here, you actually get the bordered highlight as well within your output of exactly which canvas is being used. And you actually see the name of the canvas as well. So when I go live on kick, that's going to be my kick canvas. And then on Twitch and YouTube right now, that's just my main canvas. But say for example, on YouTube, I wanna do my shorts output instead, which I know is my vertical. I can sit here and select vertical instead. You can also customize your outputs as well in case you want different encoders um, or different settings. Always remember too, 
that kick is limited to 1080p output. So therefore, if you're streaming anything in 1440p out to YouTube and you're using the same canvas, you're gonna need to select a different encoder. Now we've got our vertical there as well. And in order to go live on each one, we have to sit there and literally click on each output to go live. Yes, I know everyone wants a single output button. We are looking into it. The reason being that we can't do it immediately right now is the fact is that when you select have three or four outputs, you have one button, click on it, OBS most likely overloads or your computer overloads and it crashes. It's basically a, a restriction on the hardware parameter side of things of being able to encode so quickly three sessions. So we may possibly have a look at staggering outputs. However, when you click on it on once, if one fails, we don't want to. There's an entire thing we're trying to work around for you guys, okay? Now the next thing I'm gonna show you is the actual setup wizard. Now this is very handy for first time users. And on top of that as well, if you have no scene selected within OBS, this will also be shown as a prompt each time you open it up. So here we are on first time setting up, you're gonna get your uh, choice of your preset scene collection. We can either do gaming, just chatting or podcast. You can also build your own, which basically cuts the wizard out and you can just go straight into OBS and start building out whatever you need. So here we're gonna choose gaming. We're going to choose next and here we can actually choose what our different cameras are as well and then for example we got our microphone too so i know i'm using my desktop microphone so we're going to click next and then we're going to click finish this will pre-populate everything out here for us off the bat then we got our auto configuration wizard as well this is for when you're setting up obs or streaming or recording so we're just going to cancel that right now we're just going to just going to full screen this and look at that this is already all in here, ready for you guys to go. We got our scenes here on our vertical. We can easily hide them by dragging this down. Um, but then we also have our different scenes that we can go backwards and forwards between each one as well. So we got our gaming, which is this one here. You would just have to add in your display desktop or your game capture. Uh, but then you've also got your just chatting too. There's also some nice little, I'm going to say, transitions built in out here as well because we're also using plugins as well by Exaldro and Finite Singularity within this build so we're given the best possible outcome we can have for streamers so the fact is this is all here for you to be able to set up and get on the go with click of a finger it's as easy as that don't forget guys as well if you're wanting to actually try this out without affecting your current OBS setup as it is in beta there is bugs you, you don't want to affect any of your scenes or anything when you go onto the actual page on the Aten website for Stream Suite by clicking on Find Out More, you have the access to download an OBS portable version of this to try it all out for yourselves outside of your main build to see if it's something that you would like to use. Anyways, guys, that's all for the video today. If there's any features you really wish you could see in Stream Suite that we may not be already working on, please leave a comment down below. If you like it, like the video. If you want to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, let me know. I've got a few more things in the works in terms of product reviews. Trust me, the boxes are piling up and I need to get them done. I've been slacking on this channel. However, we have been flat out working on Stream Suite for you guys. So therefore, my own personal social media side of things has been suffering, but we are going to get back in the role of things. And until then, I'll catch you in the next one. I'll see you.